Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Nicole and today we are going to be talking about blank pages, especially in the Hobonichi Cousin where you have one whole A5 page per day and sometimes you just don't get around to filling it out. Life happens, it happens, but some people are okay with those blank pages and they can just move on and it's not a big deal at all. And then there are other people who really, really hate them and they just want every single page of their planner to be filled out. So for me, when it comes to blank daily pages in the cousin, I wouldn't say they're the end of the world, but I do make like a conscious effort to fill them in. But I'm going to be honest with you, once a new month comes, so like we are at the end of February right now, once March comes, I'm not going back to fill in February pages. So now is the time where I was thinking about if I wanted to go and fill these in, now would be a great time because we are in the last full week of February. So I want to go through and think about how I want to fill up these pages. And I thought it would be great to sort of take you along and walk you through my process of how I backfill empty pages in my cousin. So this is a spread I created of different ideas for you when it comes to filling in blank pages. So it's a collection of things that I like to do and ideas for filling blank pages, but it's also a sort of prioritization process, I guess you could say. So I would vaguely follow this sort of order when it comes to filling in those pages and deciding exactly how I'm going to do it. So I thought I would walk you through this and then we could go and look at my February pages, look at what is blank, and then I would walk you through exactly how I plan on filling them out. So without further ado, let's hop in with number one, which is to backfill the pages. So this is my number one priority when trying to fill up these pages. So if it is at all possible for me to backfill them with the knowledge that I remember about the day, that is what I'm going to do because that's the most important for me when I think about the future and what I want to see when I open this journal, but I'm not going to lie to you. My memory is horrible, which is another reason why after a month passes by, I'm not going to go back and fill it basically because I probably won't remember anything. So I do have some tips when it comes to backfilling, which would be to one reference your planner. So for me, referencing my planner means looking back at these weekly sections. So basically, if you're unfamiliar with how I'm using this planner, I will link a video that goes in depth on how I'm using it. But essentially, this is like a bite sized form of the daily pages. So it's just little spurts of information, but it's not getting into any detail. It's not really explaining anything. It's just something to like jog my memory essentially when I look at it. And then if I want to see more about it, I can go into the daily pages. So I will usually get around to filling this out. Obviously, not all the time, but I do try to make an effort to at least fill this section out if I'm not going to get to the daily page. So the first thing I'm going to do is look here and see if there's anything that I want to expand upon that I remember. It sort of transports me back into that day so that I can go back and write about anything that I deem important. That is the first place I'm going to look. And then the second place is going to be through my phone. So our phones are essentially digital journals. There's so much information that we gather throughout our day that's just in different apps on our phone rather than on a single A5 sheet of paper. So there are always a few places that I'll look in my phone. The first place is going to be my photo album. I'll look for screenshots that I took, pictures from anything that happened during the day, and decide if I want to put any of that in. And then I'll also look at my Twitter, so anything I've tweeted, any tweet that I liked, I'll look there. I'll also look at my Instagram story archive. I find that that is such a good place to look because at least in my case, I tend to put things that I'm excited about or things that I'm doing on my Instagram story and it saves all of that for you. So it's super easy to go and find those and see if there's anything you want to write down. Also, I didn't write this down here on the spread, but text messages are also a great place. I love printing out text messages and putting them in. I like, here's an example here. I just think that that's such a fun way. And the aesthetic of like a screenshotted text is right up my alley. So I love doing that. Also something that could be fun is when like Instagram, Snapchat, I think Google Photos also does this, but they'll show you like, you know, things that you've posted or photos that you've taken like a year ago today, two years ago today, three years ago today. And I think that could be super fun to sort of look back on those memories and reflect on them like one, two or three years later in your current journal. So when I see something like that come up, I think I would definitely want to try to do that. And then the last thing is going to be any sort of ephemera. Um, an ephemera is like, I feel like a romanticized word, but what I mean is like receipts, packaging, flyers, 
any sort of thing like that that you can tape in to just remind you. Journaling doesn't really always have to be about writing. I find that pictures and things that I've, you know, printed off my phone or, you know, packaging from a delivery is just as valuable to me as writing down exactly what I'm thinking. It can jog memories, it can bring you back into places that you were before, and I think that is such a powerful tool that sometimes, you know, can take a back burner to like, oh, I think if I'm going to journal, I have to write like a, a whole page. That's not exactly true. I mean, you can do that if you like, but there are other ways to store memories and um, transport yourself back into a certain place in time that's not just written words from your mind. So that is the first thing that I always try to do. Now, there are some times where I don't have anything. You know, I didn't really go on Twitter that day or I didn't take any pictures. For whatever reason, I just didn't do any of that and I can't remember. Maybe it was like at the beginning of the month. So in that case, I will move on to lists and collections. So these are things that aren't really associated with a certain day, but they are things that I would want to remember in the future. So first would be favorites and recommendations. So I love keeping track of things that I've read or watched or listened to. I think it's one of my favorite parts about journaling. So I tend to do this actually in the front of my journal, like on these perpetual calendar pages, but that's only a snapshot. So like if I read a book, I would put it in the front, but maybe I want to expand on the book. Maybe I want to write how I felt or about a scene or about a character or anything like that. So this could be a place for me to go back and write about that. Um, I also have like podcasts and episodes listen here because this is something I really want to do, which is I listen to a podcast that basically puts out a new episode almost every single day. And while I do listen to them and I enjoy all of them, some of them are better than others and some I want to remember more than others. So I want to like create a page where I just write down, you know, the episode if I really liked it and maybe like a quote to remind myself what it was about so that I can go and, you know, re-listen to them later if I want. And it's the same for, you know, television shows. So maybe you're watching a show and you're binging it and you have like a favorite episode, but you might not remember exactly which episode it was just by like looking at, you know, the list of episodes on Netflix or something. So you can like keep track of either the ones that you've watched or the ones that you really, really like. Maybe expand on a certain episode. Maybe if you didn't like it, you could talk about why you didn't like it. But I love keeping track of those things. So this is probably one of my most used. Also, top five lists are some of my favorite things to write. I make them about the most random stuff ever. So top five lists, if you've never done them, I would highly recommend using a blank page to just try and make them about whatever you want. Next, I have inspiration. So this could be anything from, you know, planner inspiration to lifestyle inspiration, you know, clothes, home inspiration, anything like that. So I get a lot of my inspiration from, you know, Instagram, Pinterest, that kind of thing. But I think it could be really fun to sort of keep track of what you were interested in or what was inspiring you at that moment. So for example, if I use a blank page in February to write about my inspiration, it's a snapshot in time of what I was into in February. So, you know, Instagram accounts, Pinterest accounts, they go on for years you use them and as your taste change, so does your use of Instagram. But there's nothing to say like, what was my Instagram looking like in February? What, who was I following? And with the algorithm kind of like doing kind of whatever it wants and not really doing anything chronologically at this point, um, it could be really fun to have sort of that snapshot that is like, here's what I was interested in right now. And then I also have swatches. So for things like, you know, markers, pens, washi tape, Anything that you want to sort of have a reference for, you could do in a blank page. So while there might not be at the initial start of the journal, you know, a place where you're like, oh, I'm going to put all of my swatches here. But as blank pages start to pile up, you can use those as grid pages, tab them off, and then have those pages as a reference. Also, in speaking of reference, inventories is something else that you could use them for. Um, whether it be, you know, what stickers do I have? Like, what are my washi tape options? that sort of thing. So not only related to stationary, but also maybe like, what does my closet look like right now? Like, what do I have? Like, I also have gratitude and one line a day stuff written here. But what I really mean by that is sort of like that either very, very specific or bite-sized journaling that makes more sense to see as a whole. So a lot of people do like, you know, a memory of the day type of thing and their monthly spread, which is amazing. But if you use your monthly spread, maybe you don't have that space. But if you have a blank page, you could either you know, do one line a day on that blank page, or you could, you know, create your own monthly spread on a blank page and do it that way. 
because there are some things throughout the month that you might just want to see together where it's possible to put them on separate pages but it makes either more sense or it's more convenient for you to look at all of those things together so that is another option but after lists and collections we move on to what i call trends and communities I really struggled with like a very broad header for this category but what i mean by that is really like you know challenges and trackers so there are a ton of stationary challenges out in the community it's something that's so great about this community is that the people are so creative and they come up with these super fun things to do whether they're you know monthly weekly yearly that kind of thing so for example cindy from alama letters has a doodle and letter challenge every month where every day of the month you know you draw something or you letter something and then Dakshina and Ellie from Ellie's Corner also have like a stationary stockpile challenge where you like use up what's in your stash and you follow a theme. So those are two things that you could either, you know, create or compile over the month on those blank pages. And there are a ton of others. Those are just two examples that like popped into my mind. Also, you know, just general lifestyle challenges, no spends workout challenges, you know, the 30 day Peloton stuff. I know we as a community love a good tracker and sometimes we don't know where to put it, but there's always a blank page for you to start those. So my last idea for the trends and community section tends to have more of a focus on like your real life community. So what I mean by that would be to let a friend decorate the page. Okay, editing Nicole here. I just wanted to pop in and say that this specific idea was inspired by a story that I saw Maria from Bujo Planner post on her Instagram story at some point, which was like a journal that had been sent to people around the world. And then, you know, they each fill out like a section of the journal and then send it on to the next person. And I thought that this was such a cool idea and could be translated to people in your everyday life. They don't have to be into journaling to do this, but if they are, that's amazing too. My best friend in real life is a bullet journaler and sometimes we get together and you know mess around in our planners together so maybe next time i go over to see her i could bring my journal and be like hey want to fill this page out for me do whatever you want and you could just have like a fun little something personal from them in your planner to see for years to come that is something i really want to do and i am definitely considering and then the last thing is just nothing don't fill it in sometimes a blank page says a lot a blank page in my case usually means nothing interesting happened that day and that's totally fine not every day of our life is going to be the most interesting day with the most insightful thing that we've ever seen you know sometimes a day is just a day you go through the motions and then you get to tomorrow but also i think it was lindsay scribbles who said this blank pages serve a purpose and that purpose is to reduce bulk so i know personally i put a lot of things in my planner that are going to at the end of the day contribute to bulk like i have a I have a feeling this planner is going to be pretty big by the time the year is up. The blank pages are just allowing you to have that freedom to put in things that you want to on days that you're actually going to want to remember. So those are some of my tips and also how I work through how to fill out my blank pages. So now I want to go through my pages for February, sort of figure out where my blank pages are and sort of go through this process with you on how I'm going to fill them out. So I guess this is like a mini flip for you guys, but as we go through, so first thing I see is here on the seventh. So I'm going to take this post-it note and I'm going to write uh, February 7th and I'm going to put a star here because it's kind of filled in, but it's kind of not. I'm still considering this blank, even though I have written something because I just happen to know that there were other things that happened on this day that I just didn't get to. But then we have the 8th and the 9th that are totally empty. Keep going. We have the 11th that I started doing something and never finished it. So that's going to get a star. We have the 15th, also empty. 17th. Wow, I was really slacking this month. And then I think that's it because today is the 24th. So... I have six days that are blank. So now I need to see if I remember basically anything that happened on this day. So like I said, first I'm gonna go to my weekly section. So we have the seventh. All right, so it looks like there was quite a few things that happened on the seventh. So I'm going to write backfill. Let's see, on the eighth, I know it looks full here, but like all of this stuff happened on Tuesday. So really there was like nothing really that happened. Um, there was this, but I don't think that needs expanded on. Same with the ninth. There's really nothing because all of this 
was for Friday. So once again, nothing I really want to expand on. So for the 11th, I don't really have anything written here either. Let's see, what did the 10th look like? Okay, so I have a full daily page for the 10th, but there are things that happen on the 10th that I didn't get to on the daily page because I was using some packaging and ephemera from a delivery. So I'm actually gonna use the 11th to write about some things that happen on the 10th. So I am also gonna write backfill. And then I'll just note on you know this page that a lot of this happened on the 10th. So I have a lot of things written on the 15th, but I don't really feel like any of this needs any expansion like it is what it is this is enough for me to remember and I already pre-decorated this page with stickers which I don't normally do but since there's like baking elements already on this page so I was thinking maybe I could put like a baking recipe here so my mom has a lot of recipes that are really good that I've been wanting to try so I might ask her for some recipes and then I will you know put it here so I'm gonna write recipe and then finally on the 17th. Okay, there are some things I wanna write about on the 17th that I remember, so I am gonna write backfill here. So, so we have four out of six days that I know what I want to do with the page. So now we just have the eighth and the ninth. Okay, so I just went through my phone off camera, obviously, because I'm using it to film, but I do have some things on my phone that I want to include on the 8th, which was actually the day that I hit 1500 subscribers. And I definitely, definitely, definitely want to do a spread about that. So, and I also wanted to say thank you so much for 1500 subscribers. That is an insane number to me. Like I can't even comprehend it. So definitely want to do something for that on the 8th, but on the 9th, I didn't have anything. It was apparently just a really boring day for me and that's fine. So I think what I want to do is either the stationary stockpile challenge for February. I'm not exactly sure what it is off the top of my head, but but if I don't do the stationary stockpile challenge, I think I will do my podcast collection thing here where I am, you know, keeping track of the episodes that I really, really like and want to eventually re-listen to. So, and that is how I plan on backfilling my pages. I hope this was somewhat helpful for you. I just know a lot of people really don't like blank pages and maybe some of these ideas helped you. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Are you someone who hates blank pages or are you someone who is just gonna move on and not even gonna worry about them? I'd love to know. So let me know in the comments down below. Uh, if you liked this video, please, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Uh, if you have any questions, also leave those down below and I will see you in the next one. Bye.